I'd like to have a perm again, but I'm actually told these, these are very my hair shortish. I was told it's never going to grow. I started off in at 11 years old. I went to acting school. From acting school, I went to it's in, in 15 in the music business, packing parcels. I was, I was a you know, obviously, T boy. And the funny thing about life is strange the other T boy there was Elton John. We started together because there was like two office boys, and he was one, I was the other one. And to make that sort of 20 or 30 years later, or 20 ish years later, I was still involved with Elton, so I, I, I went to be his MD at his record company, his publishing company. But we started together. As a two, he's, he's a little bit older than me. And, but, you know, I got more hair ish. I, I went into a club called Morton's in. in <coughs> Excuse me, in, in, uh, in Barclay Square, and Terry Venables was in there. Terry said, what are you doing, what are you doing tonight? I said, well, I've got to go, I'm a bit depressed, I've got a hell, hell of a day, you know. Come, come, cheer up, come with me, I've got to have a few drinks. I'm, I met this lovely guy there, love talking to this guy at the bar, what do you do to me? And I said, oh, well, I'll do this, and I'll do that, and the showbiz and everything, the whole shtick. And it turned out to be Steve Perryman, who was then the captain of Tottenham Hotspur. And he said, you ever thought about being an agent in football? I said, you mad me in football? You crazy? I mean, I, I don't, know, don't know about football. Who knows about football? I'm a showbiz guy, you know. Ballet dancers or singers or pop stars, yes. Anyway, he convinced me. I said, well, if you're serious, I said, well, you know, let's talk about it. So I just, you know, gave him my number and said, what the hell? Phone, so what? If he don't... But he did phone about a week later. And we chatted, we had a chat, and he convinced me to be his agent. Which was great, which I didn't realise at the time, because Steve Perrin was quite a high-profile... Uh, person in the business, not me, a fact I was playing for, not I played for the way like a Clayton or, or a Georgie Best or, or a Ryan Giggs, but he was a very well respected player, you know, mm. never had an agent. All those years of the football, a son had come to me, so it was a great passport for me because I'd become his agent and it was a tremendous passport because people said, well, if he's, Eric Halls is Steve Perryman's agent, he can't be a schmuck with Eric Halls, he must be reasonably shrewd and reasonably good because Perryman wouldn't have him. So I don't understand football, that's a fact, I've always said that. I mean, I'm, always, I'm one of those guys, you know, I'm always, always, when I go to a football match, I'm sort of sitting there in the middle, and I'm always a guy, one guy here, one guy here. And the problem is this, that because they, they sort of recognise me, get to know me now, but it's like one of the offside shticks, you know what I mean? They say to me, one of the guys goes to me, Eric's offside, isn't it? I go, yeah, yeah. I go, Eric, it wasn't offside, no, it wasn't offside. I mean, I don't understand football. Because I, really, I speak, I've got a lot of friends in the business, you know, professional managers and, and, and people. So, uh, you know, I might sort of, sort of, somebody your name might crop up all the time. You know, you sort of watch the teleplex and things, the leading goal scorer, you know, so and so scored 89 goals in the second division or 30, first division. So, you know, you, 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 you read things, you, you know, you, you pick like you're doing showbiz. A player can't go and negotiate their own deal. Mate, physically, he can do, I'm not saying that, but I mean, I mean you see it becomes three to four. Normally, when you go and do, a, new, when you go and do a, deal, a deal normally, you normally have a chairman there, the manager, even maybe the assistant manager, the club secretary, and you have this guy on his own. So it's like four to one. And quite rightly so, the club are there to do the best deal for themselves. Quite rightly so. So the, the player needs a representative too, to do the best deal for him. I don't think we have, you see. I think the media, because see, in a way, the, from what I've learned from football, the media, or the press, not so much the media, but the press side of the media, in a way, were the agents. Because years and years ago, I was told that if a club fancied a player, they would go to a local reporter and say, listen, you know so and so, see if he fancies coming here. And then also, and then, you know, and, and, and their sort of payoff would be not so much in commission, but they'd get the exclusive story. On the other hand, if they wanted to talk to me or to one of my players, a press guy, would you do a little piece with you? Yeah, sit down, then have him, but that little piece with me putting all silly hats on him and doing all silly things and doing a back page lead. But now they don't, can't do that anymore because they've got to be the agent and we want a fee for it. So the media, or the press side of me, have turned against us. But no, I miss them, I don't prefer what I'm doing now, but I do miss the record business, yeah. I do miss it. I would have a perm, I feel I've got quite good in a perm. <laughs>